Hello and a warm welcome to the Cloud Series Episode 1. This session is on hybrid cloud agility in a post-COVID-19 world. Brought to you in partnership with VM and Cloud Expo Asia. My name is Raju Chalam. I'm a fellow of the Singapore Computer Society and honorary vice president of its cloud chapter. My guest today is Mr. Joshua Ao, head of data centers at ASTAR, which is the Agency for Science, Technology and Research and is Singapore's top government agency dedicated to a world-class scientific research and development. A warm welcome, Joshua. Can you briefly explain the work you do at ASTAR? Sure. Um, uh, foremost, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, and I think we're amongst friends. Uh, I've been uh, working with Closer Still, I think, for the past conferences uh, for quite some years. And I think in ASTAR, uh, though ASTAR is not involved, but uh, in my official capacity, what I do is to manage the compute uh, for my organization. Because prior to that, I was doing something in a similar capacity, but that was for the Singapore government. Excellent. Thank you, Joshua. Warm welcome to you as well. As you and everybody knows, the pandemic has spread pandemonium everywhere. However, on the flip side, COVID-19 has forced companies to fast track their digital transformation initiatives with an increased focus on online services, cloud adoption, and digital transformation. Many companies seem to be opting for a hybrid cloud model. Is this an accurate assumption, Joshua? Um, yes, I believe so. Uh, in my view, uh, the pandemic has changed the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. And unfortunately, how computers serve us, the com computers also help us in the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. So every aspect of our lives has changed. Uh, and I think especially because of the need for social distancing, teams, people, families, they need to keep a distance apart when they're outside the house. But how is that possible? That's why a lot of activities are now increasingly online, uh, not just uh, for families, uh, not just for friends, but especially for corporations. And because of that, uh, organizations are now seeing uh, at least an increased focus on the benefits of going to the cloud. And it's not just going to one cloud, but I think as enterprises are now aware that if I need to go to the cloud, I need to take this seriously. Do I just go for one cloud or do I need to make use of the options available to me? And that is where hybrid cloud used to be an option, but it's now increasingly seen as a necessity. But uh, what do you think are the benefits of a hybrid cloud model as compared to a full cloud model? Sure. I think that's a good question. And uh, in my view, there's no one size fits all. Um, if you work with the likes of Azure, for example, I love Azure because of Databricks. But in the same way, each cloud has its own nuances. The, the challenges in approaching each cloud is that we do not know what we do not know. You have to take the time to understand the merits and the, and shall I say the, the differences between each cloud. Now, how is that possible unless we take time to engage them? And hopefully unless the cloud, the various cloud players, they take time to engage us. Uh, I think there are many aspects. There is the aspect of understanding the technical uh, features of each cloud. There's also the matter of cultivating relationships. Unfortunately, it is what it is because in order for us to make use of a particular cloud, it becomes part of my supply chain. Just as I need outsource facilities management, I need outsource uh, finance or, or what so be it. In order for me to do so, I need to incorporate it into my, uh, the way my enterprise works. So I need to be able to procure the services. I need to be able to integrate it into the day-to-day -day operations of my organization. So there's a lot of fine details here. Now, why specifically hybrid cloud? I think it's because uh, we don't want to put all eggs in one basket. And at the same time, uh, I do recognize that different clouds, they have slightly different advantages. How do we make use of these features? Unless we spread our eggs and, and, and then we decide to have a hybrid architecture where I could make use of the strengths of a particular cloud 
and where certain clouds do not offer me what I need, I'm able to spread out my, my eggs and use uh, another option as well. But again, I concede that the devil's in the details. That's a good uh, explanation. But are government organizations also using the hybrid cloud model in Singapore? That's a very interesting question. And uh, I, I think some of our common friends have had the same conversation. Uh, you might you might recall that uh, I think a few years back, there was a lot of conversation uh, in the public forum, including the news, the Business Times, and they shared about how the Singapore government uh, had called a tender to to procure public cloud services. I, I won't go into the details, but it's all in the public internet. And if you refer to all the news, in fact, the Prime Minister of Singapore said that we're going to put a certain percentage of the cloud, sorry, a certain percentage of uh, the Singapore government's compute to the public cloud. Now, that's a commitment. At the same time, it's also a declaration that even the Singapore government recognizes that there are certain advantages to going to the public cloud. Now, I'm making a distinction here. It's a very nuanced one. There is private cloud, which is what we've all been accustomed to. But when we move to the public cloud, there are trade-offs. Because a public cloud is something that we cannot fully control. We have no full oversight of. So there's a trade-off, and I believe there's a leap of faith. Now, in order for us to do so, it doesn't take a day or two. If you look at what just the Singapore government is doing, uh, there's a lot of groundwork, you know, getting the playbook out, uh, establishing the ground rules, how to do connectivity, establishing the ground rules, how to do authentication. Uh, I can only share what's publicly available, but I think I'm trying to allude to the point that before we can move to benefiting from the hybrid cloud, the civil service needs to pivot and change the way it thinks. It used to be that all of us would want to have our little items with our own little server rooms. But by doing so, we're stifling innovation. And, and this innovation is something that we would not be able to get with just a few hundred developers. By typing on the likes of Azure, the likes of Google, the likes of AWS, or the likes of Alibaba, there are so many of them out there. Now, when we tap on that ecosystem, we're, taking, we're, we're tapping on the the strengths, the innovations, the new ideas of hundreds of thousands of developers. When each of them come up with something, it's available through the repository, and we're not able to tap on these features. For example, if we had stayed with the past, we wouldn't be able to make use of things like Kubernetes, and we wouldn't be able to make use of things like Terraform. Now, all these things have allowed us to leapfrog how the civil service uh, compute architecture can be designed. And these are capabilities which are not inherent in the civil service. Excellent. So as you know, security used to be a major concern on the cloud previously. Is it still bothering cloud users, according to you? Well, I cannot speak, uh, and maybe I should have said this at the start, I cannot speak for my colleagues. I do not speak for my organization. But as an end user, uh, and, I'm, and I'm very biased here, uh, I'm a data center manager. If we all go to the cloud, would I still need to have a data center in my premises? Now, that's a very nuanced question. But in reality, there's no one size fits all. Not everything goes to the cloud. There will be some things which stays on premise. But at the same time, there are things which are well positioned to go to the cloud to leverage on the strengths of the cloud, where the very nature of the public cloud will give us such vast advantages. Be it the ability to scale, the ability to, uh, to do things like data analytics on the cloud, something which is very difficult to be done on premise. And some of the capabilities are now available to us. Now, again, I'm not going to find details. But what I'm suggesting is, if you talk about security, security is a very tough call. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that you have had uh, similar conversations with the likes of Xiaofei or the likes of uh, your colleagues with SG Tech. Security is always the first priority. In fact, I would say it is now hygiene. But I'm going to take a step back and, and take stock here. 
would I be able to do a good job securing my compute environment with a team of 10 or 100 persons? Now, let's say in the public service, we have maybe more than 70,000 people. The efforts of 70,000 people versus the efforts of the likes of a giant such as Microsoft or the likes of AWS, where they spend billions of dollars to secure the cloud. Now, is the cloud secure? In my view, the cloud is secure. But is it secure by default? I think that's a very different question. And in my view, it's not just about whether a car is secure, it's whether the driver knows what he's doing. It takes, it takes more than one party to ensure that the car is able to go drive from point A to point B. And if you look at most of the incidents, I'm not saying all, but if you look at most of the incidents, very often it's with the configuration issues. If you misconfigure your storage bucket, can AWS correct the mistake? Actually, they can't, and they shouldn't. They shouldn't correct the mistake because how would they know whether it's an intentional mistake or it's an accidental mistake? They wouldn't be able to know. What they can do is to give you a secure container. The container is secure, but the contents, which is your responsibility, you have to do what you have to do. So I, I think the challenge here uh, is not so much that the cloud is not secure, but that sometimes we are not prepared or perhaps we are not ready to secure our compute in the cloud. And, and let me maybe say something that it sounds a little wrong. If we weren't able to secure our compute while it was running as a little FIDEM in a little server room, why would it become more secure just because we put it in the cloud? Because for a lot of us, we are simply doing a lift. We leave our compute lock stock barrel, we put it into the likes of AWS or the likes of Alibaba, which means that whatever we comp whatever we lift it to would inherit the same exact problems, the same exact vulnerabilities. So in my view, that security is a context spot, it's also a team spot. It needs everyone to be involved, but the way we do it has evolved. Users okay, that is. Yes, that's a good point. But uh, how would you hand? Uh, how would you answer an SME, for instance, who don't have adequate IT talent, nor security uh, awareness? How would they be able to handle cloud security? Any tips for them? Okay. Um... I'm, I'm prone to saying very unpopular things. <laughs> I'm really very prone to saying unpopular things because I think sometimes the truth is is something that's a little jarring to hear. In my view, if you're an SME, you are a business. As a business, you manage profit and loss. You manage opportunity and risk. Now, if you see IT as an outsource function, Frankly, mentally, emotionally, you don't really care. You don't know, you don't care. You don't care to know because you think it's just an outsource function. If you see IT as an integral part of your business, you might not be a technology business, but it is now an integral part of it, just as your accounts receivable, your HR, it's an integral part of your business. If it screws up, you screw up together with it. Now, what I would suggest to SMEs is that because SMEs are now fighting for survival. When you fight for survival, you don't have spare money, you don't have spare time. But what you need to do is to figure out what is your hygiene. You need to at least do your bare minimum. Now, if you go to the cloud, and I would suggest that the cloud is actually perfect for SMEs. If you work with the major clouds, in fact, most of them, they will actually have an account manager that, uh, that serves the SME market and serves the startup market. Talk to the account manager, seek help. And in fact, I believe IMDA has been doling out a lot of help and they offer a lot of assistance in, in this area. Leverage on the resources available to you, start small. But yes, now then there's a certain gap here. If I am, let's say, let's say I'm a furniture shop. I, I want to use a very simple example. I'm a furniture shop, I sell furniture. 
I'm not someone as a business owner, maybe I'm totally clueless about IT. And I want to have some of my business functions be put online so that I can leave it on the benefits. I want to sell furniture online. Now, do I need to use a cloud? I could. Now, but what are the what are the few steps I need to do before I turn it on? I would suggest you need to get help. You need to get help. Maybe some help. And and I think the Singapore government is is doing part of that. But I think there's also such a thing called personal responsibility. As a business owner, you don't need to know the full business, but you need to know maybe that five percent. And that five percent helps you to make good business decisions because every decision you make could be a major decision that affects your business, it affects your profit loss, your opportunity, and your risk. So from coming from the point of view, I would suggest that business owners and those within the business need to own the IT. They need to at least understand the fundamentals. It's unfair. But then again, business is always unfair because we're talking about survival. If you know less than your competitor, not just in the, the lines of businesses, but also in the back end, you need to do your HR well. You also need to do your IT well. So you need to know at least that bare minimum. And if you need help, if you need help to figure out the bare minimum, I think there are many uh, outsourced vendors out there who are willing to help you for a modest fee. So I think there's a certain personal accountability. I need to figure out, I need to do my homework. I need to understand 5% of how the cloud works. And maybe for the good 35%, I may need to find someone to help me to do the initial securing. Like for example, AWS. AWS uh, is very good friends with Horangi. Horangi does a great job of securing it. There are many templates that I've seen Horangi do. Now, I'm not saying they're the only one. I'm simply saying that there are many friends out there who are willing to help you almost for free, but not totally free. And, and I hope that that alludes to what I think that journey should be. It's a good point you brought out about risk. The way I see risk is actually business continuity and disaster recovery. So in your view, is it a good idea to have all of your workloads on a single cloud or spread it across two cloud or two cloud platforms as a BCDR situation? I, I don't think there's a one size fits all answer. And, and that's because I've worked with many agencies. I've also worked with many private businesses as well. Uh, I've, and I've worked with businesses that actually gone under. So I'm, I'm not saying this from, a, from an armchair. I'm saying there's someone that was in the boat and we were all trying to struggle to stay alive. The business was struggling to stay alive. So as someone that's gone through that, that very scary journey of fighting for survival, my suggestion is not everyone is prepared for hybrid cloud and perhaps it might be a lot easier to start with one cloud of choice that in my view and again i'm not saying that i know better but i think it's a good idea to start with one cloud because there are a lot of fundamentals you need to figure out you need to figure out what is storage you need to figure out what is at the front end now once you've figured out how, what works for one of the many flavors and then you want to spread it out it becomes a lot easier for you because the lessons can actually be uh, common. You know, whatever with Alibaba Cloud, I noticed certain certain similarities with some of its competitors. And then there's one in four, there's one in five out there. There's the likes of Kingsoft, there's the likes of Oracle Cloud. There's uh, so many flavors out there, but the challenge is, is doing the matchmaking. How do I find a particular cloud flavor that I can be comfortable with that scales and is priced in a way that that helps me to reach that sweet pot sweet point. It's the same thing about building a data center. When I build a data center, I'm looking for a sweet spot where the effort to maintain the data center justifies the benefits I'm getting out of it. It's getting that sweet spot. That's a business sweet spot. And my suggestion is need to start with one cloud and maybe you need to experiment, experiment small. Personally, I will not put all my compute in one cloud at one time because if I make a bad mistake, it's very hard for me to go back. But when I start small, that the purpose is to 
glean some of these learning points. For example, how would I connect back to my intranet? These, these are things which maybe even your consultant won't, won't, won't highlight to you. But as an end user, you need to know because you're responsible for getting it to work. So even ignoring what the consultant says, ignoring what your account manager says, what you really want is, I simply want my compute to work the way it's designed to. I want it to be consumed the way it's supposed to so that the, my lines of businesses can continue. It can be a HR function. It can be a finance function. It can be a, a consumer facing outward function like a, a web application and so forth. Now, do I need to be an expert? No. If I were, it's a luxury. In most cases, most small businesses, you don't have the luxury of attracting an expert. And I've worked with many experts. Some of these experts cost an arm and a leg. But to start, you need to start somewhere. So for example, I, I took uh, I took ASIC 900. That's, that's a, 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 the most basic uh, Azure fundamental course that you can take. I'm now training for GCP, I'm training for Alibaba Cloud, I'm training for AWS. Because when I know a little of everything, I'm able to see the commonalities and I'm also starting to see the differences as well. So I think there's an aspect where perhaps you need to make, uh, you, need to have an, you need to have a game plan where you want to spread your basket, where you want to spread the eggs. You need to think about building up that capability as well. But because you're a small business, you cannot stop all your businesses. You cannot stop all your your resources just to focus on your IT. I know it's not practical. I've seen people do that. And it's a bad idea. You need to run your business. IT is there to support business. IT is not the business, not unless you are a technology company. So while you f perform your business, at the same time, you need to divest some time to slowly build up that capability and slowly take on small projects, small experiments to figure out how cloud A works, how cloud B works, how cloud C works. There's a lot of fine details. Again, it falls back to your authentication. It falls back to your direction of websites. It falls back to how do you want to scale? There are a lot of fine details. If you do this for a living, it's, it's bread and butter for you. But I think for SMEs, uh, Let's say the furniture shop owner, would he understand the nuances? He, he doesn't, but he needs to at least spend some time to figure out the fundamentals. And I think if you understand the fundamentals, you'll be able to make informed decisions rather than knee-jerk reactions. Because when you make knee-jerk reactions, you are making a decision based on assumption. You don't know, you're gambling. You're going on the basis of, let's go to the cloud. I have no idea what it is, but let's go. That's a gamble. And gambles may not always work well. Thanks. Uh, that was a very detailed answer. My last question and a short answer. Your top three tips for effective digital transformation on the cloud. Sure. Um, that's, <laughs> that's, these are actually very difficult questions, which could take a day or two. Uh, but if I had to condense it, I would suggest that you need to be strategic, you need to be intentional, you need to be collaborative. And let me just elaborate a few words on that. What I'm saying is don't take chances, take a step back, take stock of what you're capable of, how much resources you have, and then plan to make it happen. Don't take too big of a, a leap of faith. At the least, take some time to train someone. Take some time to talk to someone that has already done it. I'm sure as a business owner, you know of at least another five persons that have undertaken the same journey. And out of the five, at least three of them, you trust enough to have an honest conversation. If I don't know how to ride a bike, what the least I should do is talk to someone else that has done so, hear out their experiences, and then you can take a step back and decide what should be my game plan? How do I do it strategically? How do I do it intentionally? How do I execute? Because it's one thing to have a good idea. It's another thing to execute the good idea. So you need to have a game plan. You need to have an action plan how to execute this strategy. 
And I think if you have that, uh, you will not be taking chances, but rather you're making an informed risk. But there is a plan. There's a plan to guide you and you can slowly change that plan as you go along.